Hello, I job Beer here. And if you remember uh, four or five months ago, depending on if I get this video out, there used to be a circuit board right down there. And these wires are attached to it right here. And uh, this whole thing used to be a uh, tankless water heater. And well, since these things need like, gas, in this case, natural gas, and electricity cord, um, the electricity part burned up the circuit breaker due to uh, something beyond most people's control. And uh, yeah, left with this. And to make this part short, the, uh, the board went to go see about getting that replaced and not fixed because fixed wasn't going to work. And the board was like, you know, three to five hundred bucks online. And then you call the factory, the, the manufacturer of this, and they're like, oh no, try this other website. And while you're on the phone with them, you try their website, and guess what? It's already been like outdated and gone and blah, blah, blah. So, so step two, uh, replace it. So um, this is going to be a little video about how to replace this uh, tankless hot water heater. And we got a new one. The first thing I'll do, which I think has already been done, is up yonder there, there's a valve. That should be the cold water coming in. And uh, you can either turn that off, or um, mm -mm. or you can uh, go outside and turn off the main water valve, which is I did both of them, I think. So that's off, and outside's off. Next thing, you can let some of the water drain. You get the, the lowest, maybe outside spigot in your house. Um, or a place you're working on, you turn it on, let the water kind of backflow out, turn on some faucets inside the house, like the hot water would be a good one. It should help suck out the water from this thing, but we also have this uh, pop-off valve here and a uh, bucket down there. And so if I pull on it, it's going to uh, drain some more water, I can't say that at all now, into this magic bucket. Right, and I glow going away. It's not too much. The other thing I've done here is uh, here's where the natural gas comes in. Turn that off because you don't need that on right now. And well, that's just about uh, it's much drained. I'll go and prepare the new model and unbox it. All right, so no product replacement per se, but uh, it's that company there, Rame, and uh, this one here's a uh, non-condensating tankless gas water heater. So I believe some of these that that aren't this way. At the top there, there's a special deal that collects evaporation, and there's another thing to do like sit outside, or you have an outside model. They can kind of sell at once, but uh. This one's an indoor one, like the other one, um, up to 0.82 UFE. Uh, you got some tools there, you got some other pictures, you have icons and stuff, recycle stuff. Oh, recycle packaging. Uh, in the box you got, this one you got tankless water heater, digital remote control, gas shelf valve, power cord, and use and carry manual. This particular one is a 160,000 BTU natural gas and up to a uh, seven gallons a minute. And it's good for like two to three bathrooms. So kind of, a, well, maybe a normal home, a smaller home. And uh, this actually was under about a uh, thousand bucks, maybe 800 something, depending on where you get it from. And who knows, in a few more years, maybe this two will be gone and they have another model. So, I'll probably use a little knife or something on these straps, cut the bottom off, stand back up because it wants to be stood up or on the side, and get to unboxing it. But, a quick jaunt here. When people see this 160,000 BTUs, so, once upon a time I talked to a fellow, a fellow person, and I was like, uh, maybe these aren't that great, depends. So, if you're the kind of household, I think, that likes to take long showers, in theory, this is rated at uh, 160,000 uh, British thermal units, uh, I think it's per hour. I could be totally wrong here, ask the gasologist. But on your normal big round tanked 
hot water heaters. Those usually do about 35,000 to maybe 50,000 BTU burners in them. And so, in theory, if it, they run like all day long, supposedly, on and off. So in theory, if you take short showers and need short bursts of uh, hot water, this here should save you some money. In theory, but if you like to take a long shower, a lot of hot showers, this here might actually cost you more gas in the long, long run. All right, to the unboxing. Okay, after getting the box, what we got here is we got the uh, the big tankless water heater using care manual. That's gonna stay you know, with the people in the house for sure. Uh, we got the easy installation guide, this generic looking thing. Um, so the parts you should have. And we're gonna tell you about other parts you may need to get like, uh, a vent thing. That's definitely important. You get a vent kit there. It has a mall number listed there. And um, I don't have that one, but I do have a vent kit that's suitable for this already. Which looks like this one here, the horizontal one. Um, vertical, other stuff. Some kind of link cable. I guess you can link two of these together. But uh, yeah, this actually says that it should go in with just uh, I think 10 easy steps. All right, and then you got like here a supplement sheet, which is important for, uh, in this case, for once people in uh, Massachusetts. Yeah, so we're not there. So gas supply it talks about that in the pressure trap. Um, so the thing is, you need to have a, a good gas supply for these things. Like if you have high-end appliances that use um, a lot of gas, you need that <laughs> blowtorch, you know, to it. Uh, cold water, three-quarter inch. That's pretty standard. Uh, hot water, same. Remote connection. Uh, what's number four? Down at the bottom, if you have a remote control. Maybe this is for the other unit. But um, we'll get into this soon. Exhaust vent, condensation trap. So it's still there, even though it's not supposed to be there. Interesting. And the mounting bracket. Yeah, right there at the top of that, you got the round circle, you got the thing in the background C. That's the mounting bracket. Um, double walled vent, right? It has some measurements there so you can see how you're going to hang this on the wall. Ho hopefully, it fits in on the space that's already here. And okay, more of that later. Gas valve, look at that. Nice, shiny. I probably took this with me. The one that's there is adequate. I'm pretty sure. Then I've got a cord here, power cord. I can tell you right now, it's not as beefy looking as the other one. Um, and Weird. There's no, there's no plug on this thing. And that's, uh, oh, maybe should have plug. Maybe it's supposed to be direct wire. So I might be using the old cord. And then we got here the new uh, remote thermostat thing, which you saw in the old video of me uh, laying this thing. Yeah, this looks pretty much like the old one did. And I'll probably just fit on the same wall spot that that one is. So I'll probably even change this bracket on the wall. Probably like that. And then, over here we got this thing here. All in on the ground stuff. And, uh, oh, never mind. Whoop. We got the cord already on it. Look at me not looking at things. So, this one's already corded in. And we have some other stuff here at the bottom to take a look at. And that's, that's, what, that's why I want you to slide out and have it sitting on the, the cardboard that it came with. Because it, um, it braces it and, and keeps these things from knocking about. So you got the, uh, looks like a gas picture over here. Your cold water here, hot here, remote control thing there. Which I'll win that later. And at the top there they have a good little warning on the ducting part. I'll read over again to make sure I'm not doing anything wrong here. But uh, basically they want this thing dicked out right. And you might have to get some uh, high temperature sealant. Which is, in this case, before that. That yellow gummy stuff. High temperature. Right? Right. And that goes through the wall. And it's uh, on the back side too with the high temperature stuff. Alright. So step one here. I don't know what I'll do. I think I'll, well, I think I'll unhook uh, this one here, right? And so, 
I'll get a better bucket from the ground and basically undo the connections for the water. Um, one there, so that where the hot water comes off this contraption here for pop-off valve, and up there where the cold water goes in the unit, and I'll even do the gas and do that one there. So I'm just going to use an adjustable wrench on that stuff, unhook things, and put a bucket down where the tubes might go. All right, so gas yeah, hands over here. It's not hissing, so the gas is off. Um, droopy drooping uh, piping's here going into that little bucket I added. Uh, some more of this stuff, and clean this. Man. This here is actually the end of the power cord way down there. And uh, this is a trawl uh, canalization, kind of. There's a ton of parts and things you could probably do with this stuff inside, and recyclables and whatever, but uh, this cord's coming with me. And uh, it's safe to use as long as you, you know, check the ratings on stuff. So it's not an extension cord, it's not like that. But it could be something to replace another cord on something else. Set that side. And, you know, there's also things like, there's going to be a plethora of little uh, screws up here, like the ones that hold the cover down. You know, those are probably good in my uh, little workshop organizer. And uh, basically now, it's mounted on the bottom and the top by these brackets that look something like this. Right, you got the one here in the middle, that's an important one, that's to kind of level it out to where you want it, and you have some extra screws to hold it up there. Not a whole lot of needed, but next thing I'll do is, uh, I'll take off these here and see if I can get this loosened from the, from this. I don't want to mess with this too much, but I will if I have to. And otherwise, plan here is to take these off. And then take off the bottom ones, or do the bottom ones. And these here, basically it's going to drop this whole unit down and out. So, I also took, like I said, there's a little hot water, the pop-off valve, all stuff took off the bottom. So, here we go. Okay, so you got the connections down here. Um, the remote, that was like this here. And I uh, just take a screw up and it pops off. You have your two. Connection tabs, and that is what this wire setup is for. Which to me is a little overkill, but I guess in theory you could have had it, um, I don't know, located in a different room almost, this right. What used to be there was, uh, what, 24 inches maybe? And this here is like a lot more. So, yeah, white and black here, and uh, white and black on this side here. And so, a little separation here. And get your screwdriver. Um, hmm. Awkward. You want to see a screwdriver around here? Here we go. Okay. And this here goes up through this uh, plastic dealio. And it's locked in here. Put it right here. I'm gonna do the black at the top. All right, unscrew that. Unscrew this one here. And these just slide right underneath there. Ching! And snug it on down nicely. And as you can see, I'm doing this without it hanging on the wall yet. Because I just thought it would be a little bit more easier to show this down here. Okay, slow it down nicely. And back up here. Nicely. Lock the cord in there, and now it shows nothing about this, but this is threaded. In case you want to attach some other pipe to it or locking thing to it. Let's see here. Goes in the back. 
Where's that little notch in? Boop and boop. Okay, and that gets secured with, I believe this screw here came out of that unit. Mm, I use it for hours, but that just means I'm not finding the hole. There we go. Okay, then the next part is uh, what I like to call a tail of two Teflon tapes. All right, so most people, of course, seen this one here the blue and the white covering, or something equate to that. And there's this stuff here, yeller, go yeller. Now yeller here is actually good for, um, really for gas lines. And uh, natural gas, mm, I'm thinking propane too, but maybe not. Uh, yeah, you know, it's for natural gas, um, propane, yeah, propane, butane, Naphthane, benzene, kerosene, and of course natural gas. So, you got the natural gas uh, spigot down here. So this little cap will be coming off that. I'll be wrapping this on. And um, what do they talk about here? They talk about uh, not to exceed one and a half inch pipe. Let's see, minimum of four full wraps is required. So, pop this thing open, take her out, find the end, which is always fun. Oh, that's not too hard. And uh, make it nice and flat-ish. Okay, this thing here pops off. And uh, take this off, the old one, right? This is a flared fitting here, thread here. And uh, the flared fitting needs nothing. But uh, this here does. And you get started here, and then it goes pretty easy after that. Especially if you've done this a few hundred times, which uh, I have not. I haven't put Teflon tape on anything in a long time. Okay. One. And you give it a little pull as you work with it, give it a little stretch to try to get in those grooves good. Quit laughing at me, everybody. Arr. Okay, so I got about 10,000 wraps here, maybe. Can I go up the Go up a little bit too. So you get it right there, and yeah. Then, so this here on, start by hand. And get kind of snug going. And then I'll switch to a, a wrench. And tighten it up nice and snug like. This here has some screws here securing it, so I don't think that's a problem of it slipping. If it did, you might want to use two wrenches on it. Now, the other side is a uh, unit full of hot water, which is right here. And uh, pop that one off. I use the blue normal Teflon tape here. And, uh, hmm, I guess I test this thing. Same thing, get some wraps here and tighten down the fitting I got here. Let's see here. Mm. 
Yeah, I'll just put that there for now. Come here. And this way you can tell it's even a even a thinner stuff. This uh Teflon tape. Maybe it's just a brand. God, it's maddening on it. Okay, well, I'll wrap this and get back to it. Okay, so now if you see that up there, that's a little bit different than before because this part here, um, whether I liked it or not, was actually part of the old one. So, you can see there the crud on it, the heat-resistant uh, caulking. And this is what it looks like on the inside, see? There's actually some, I'm assuming, high-heat silicone baffling here, you know, at the bottom. And so this here, basically, the inner one has your three inch there. It goes up in there. And then in this case here, this here goes up in the uh, five incher. Right? So, the other unit has the same kind of a deal on it. And it's going to slide up in there. Oh, it would be great. And probably a pain. Ever so slightly. So, now comes the fun part. Uh, mounting the new one. But, I have faith in the system. And I will probably... Uh, if this was a new install, you would um, do like it has there. You would hang it up there, you put a screw in the middle, where you want it, hang that bracket with the uh, unit on it, and then level it out and add the other screws ever so much like here and here, and then the bottom is support all. Then you would attach your, your venting. Since the venting, venting's already there, it's time to lift the new unit up into the venting, snug it up, and then mount it to the wall. Sounds fun, right? Okay, we'll see how it goes. All right, so you see, uh, it's not up there. Reason being is that, yeah, the, uh, after some non-measuring tactics, I found out that this right here, this needs to come out some. This here, that's in there solid. So, outside it looks like it's not too um, secured, but inside it is. So this is where we're gonna um, bring out my uh, specialty tool here, right? Right, mm, ever so slightly bent screwed over, slotted, mm. and uh, something to strike it with, a mallet, a, a hammer, a heavy wrench, and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, tap around, around these sides of it there, ever so gently, and uh, eye protection on, of course. So I got this in here, right up against it, and this here. Right. That's gonna hopefully help free it up. Oh yeah, and make this job worse. But um, basically, I think I'm basically breaking up some old uh, wall compound that's in there. Maybe the old, uh, the old silicone stuffing. <laughs> so I'm gonna continue to bang around that and see if I can loosen up said uh, ducting piece. All right, so after destroy it a little bit, looks like that. And now it's um, it's kind of not really free free, but uh, adjustable stuff. Ever so slightly. If you want more adjustable, you have to take the stuff off the outside of it. But that might be fine. Now, I'm gonna get myself a measuring tape. But I have this instead. Uh, a strap piece. I'm gonna measure the um. The back here of the water heater, so to say, to uh, about the midline of the ducting on the, the water heater, and just kind of uh, pop it right here. And you know what? That is not bad. That's adjustable to work with. Okay, so yes. I have a tape measure, it's just not in my pants. Um, now we're ready to try to mount this thing. So, 
In theory now, this, this is going to be, I could do a test dry fit, or I could just go for it. And I think I'm going to, well, yeah, already test dry fit it. So I'm going to go for it. And when I say go forward, for it, um, what that means is on the uh, part of the, this part here, ah, uh, yeah, is um, this part here is going to slip right here. It's going to slip up inside the outer rim. And there's the inner one there that slips in the inner rim. I think I remember. And so I'm going to put some of the uh, heat resistant caulking on this part here. Right, probably, probably closer down here. And I will also end up caulking some more of it after it's installed. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you won't see this, I'm going to put on the, the um, fire retardant caulking, and then slip it up here, into there, mount it to the wall with four screws, and and that, that's how I, uh, I guess this is how we got this um, done. You got two by fours, I don't know if you noticed that, yeah, two by four there into a stud and into a stud on this side, so that 2x4 has been pretty good. And um, as long as you don't strip out the holes or whatever, you can mount either drill no, new holes or mount in the same old ones, because this, this looks like the bracket's pretty much about the same fitting. So with any luck, uh, next shot it should be in to a point, right? 2x4 down here. And this is a good spot where if you had friends and stuff, you might bring one along. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's in there. And uh, this right here. Yeah. They even sunk a screw in to uh, keep the duck from flopping around. Or it was pretty snug there. So that there, of course, is all sloppy. Uh, I'm gonna cock around it some more to make sure there's no no gaps. And. Um, I can do a little bit of uh, cocking over the screw. Yeah, because that makes people mad. So, that there covers the vent stuff for now. The, uh, well, the top definitely has some, some repair to be doing up there, which is probably not going to be on this, but it's basically going to be wall compound and some backing to uh, let the wall compound stay there. And painting and uh, Priming, sanding, priming, painting, all that kind of stuff. All that stuff, you want to try to keep all the dust from going into your new unit, too. That's horrible. So, I got four of those screws in there. And an important note here on, on those screws. Um, if you, you know, anyone that's worth their salt in a, doing a lot of job jewelry should know that a lot of screws, they come with stuff, some of them are cheap. Probably can't see there, a little strippy yutty. And this is after even drilling pilot holes. I actually put it up there, um, mark out some areas, pull it down, drew some pilot holes, and then uh, tried sinking this in. And it's like, well, hmm, it got a little cheapy. So I got them all in there. But yes, go ahead and use, uh, you know, some of those self tapping screws. Those are nice. Uh, let's see, what I'm going to do now is on the outside. On the other side of this uh, hose is the metal plate. I'm going to take a razor blade and scrape off any kind of old gunk around there and caulk on new uh, fire, what is it, fire block? Fire, it's not, not fireproof. It goes up to a thousand. Uh, where's it go to? Crazy. I don't know. 1,300, I thought. Now, is that Fahrenheit or Celsius? I don't know. So, anyways, caulk around the outside. Um, I'll put two more of those screws in here to hold up this uh, arrangement, and uh, we'll be back to connecting things. All right, so we're down here. Um, the uh, fire retardant caulking did pretty good. Messy, whatever. Down here we got but a few things. We got here a uh, back here. This is where the water coming in goes. So just pull that thing off, drop it on the floor, and uh, water in is going to come like this. It has a uh, 
washing it that you'll know pretty quick if it's going to fill or not. Get up in here. Try not to cross thread. In fact, don't cross thread. That's bad. So I'm just do a hand tighten. A slight over strength. And then uh, bring out the trusty wrench. Crescent in my case. And start with a, maybe a quarter turn snugger. Now, a little more than a quarter turn snugger. I'm going to hold this and twist this. That's good enough. And in some cases, you need to have uh, two wrenches. I guess there's a place like grab up here. This one here is already on, threaded with um, silicone, silicone, Teflon, we did that before. The, uh, oh, the power cord here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and untether these wire strap here. And uh, run it back here. There's a, there's a little hole there, which is probably where they had the old one with a little, uh, you know, some of these grabby things here, right? So that and the screw should secure it in the back there and will run along to a power source. Let's see here. Stuff a little drip loop thing and uh, do that like this, get it in there. Get that fairly snug. And then I see there's some more of those. Let's just bring them down the line. It's a little stiff. It's a little, it's a little, how you say, cold. Uh huh. Okay, for now we'll leave it that way. And what else we got here? We got, we got a gas line here. Gas line will come back over to where it belongs. This is back over here. Same thing, don't cross thread. Sometimes these are set and done. She gets little weird kinks and stuff in the line. Sometimes, but uh, I think we got it here. It's just me. All right. This is a flare fitting, no tape on it. If you think it's uh, still leaking after it's on, something's probably wrong with the flare part. Tighten it up, give it a little extra wrench time. Okay, so we got that there. This thing here, this is a shark bite. And uh, I believe it's okay to use in this situation since it was in there before. And that's going to put us back with this contraption here, which we saw in the beginning has a uh, pop off valve there. It has an exit for the hot water. So, shark bites should just press right in here. You get this plastic thing down here and uh, make sure there's no burrs and stuff. So, white part goes in there, the other part goes on the outside, and you just press it in there. Like so, nice and easy. Um, yeah, like that. And, what else we got? We got this thing here. This thing here is going to go around the back side and work its way upwards. 
Now this is a lot of slack here. And we got two wires, so I believe this thing here can be cut down to size. I can't defeat this rubber band. <sighs> okay, so I'll just throw it to the side for now. And uh, where are we at here? Ah, down here. Down here's where the hot water comes out. So I'll rotate it around towards the hot water pipe. And make a connection. piece it's going to. So I'm very careful when I tighten this up. One time I wrenched so hard I broke the solder off, which is not too hard apparently. But that's another place. For now I'm going to snutter. Yeah, that's probably good enough for that. And uh, Shark bites, if you've never uh, seen them before or used them, they press on after you've cut flush, flush, you know, 90 degree angle. And then to take them off, you get these little tools here, right? It snaps on the thing and you push up, and it pushes this little tannish ring here in there to get the teeth from biting. And uh, yeah, magic. Uh, Okay, so these connections are all made on the bottom. Next we'll go to the control panel of things, which is up there. Now, this I'm just going to reuse again, because this here is mounted good in the same, same fit as the new one. Otherwise, it's basically, you know, two screws with wall anchors, it looks like. Right? Hmm. Okay, so as you can see here, we have this here wire. Right, it goes like that, and um, oh, up, up, up those, up the wall to, uh, you know, right about there where it's been on that panel. That to me says it's too long. So, what I'm going to do here is take some, uh, some tools, you know, it's not plugged in yet, so it's all dead, and uh, I'm going to cut off maybe right here. See? Don't need all this. Too much. Then, I'm going to uh, find something, like a sharp razor blade. Now be careful here. You know, one slight move and you can cut your hand off or something. And uh, just slightly, maybe here, just kind of cut it in. There's actually, um, a tool for this, right? You can strip the wire. And um, let's see here how it's situated. Mm -hmm. Gloves might be nice, but then gloves are also hard to uh, control stuff, right? Hmm. Why not have the thing for this? Uh, well, when in doubt, use number ten wire stripper and just try to get your uh, the ones you need on the inside good so that right there nicked it <laughs> so I just start over ah okay this is going to be slow moving moving but I'm going to very carefully uh, get that outer casing off without nicking the wires in, inside here so I don't want these mixed. There, no blood or nothing, right? Okay, so then take the uh, wire strippers here and do just um, a quarter inch. So uh, find the right size and. Like that. 
And another one here. Now, every good wire strip deserves a good twist, so I'm going to twist these ends. Or if you have more um, those uh, wire connections, you can tap one on, but I don't have any here. And really need them. So we got that in there. Now then, uh, that panel. Make sure it, you know, it goes up like this. And it says that these are non polarized. So, in theory, you can go top or bottom. But we'll see how it goes here. I think it likes these screws like a P1. Or maybe not, maybe it's P2. So far, it's getting slightly uh, annoying here because it's so tight. You know what? I think this bottom is already kind of getting stripped out, so. I gotta be extra careful now just by trying to unscrew it. Mm -hmm. Top one's fine, bottom one, not so fine. So let me see what I got here. Maybe a, sometimes a uh, you know, a little slot of one could fit in there. So in this case, I use a broken tip slot of one. And like, so this needs to get loosened up first. Yep, there we go. Broken slider one one. Okay, then. Let me get back to those wires though. Well, back to a little more. To them. All right, let's grab a tip here, give it a little curl and a curl. Mm. I'm gonna curl that one. Okay, then we'll wire this up. And I might need to. Uh, Cut off more of the casing, but here we go. Yeah. Uh, why'd it be so awkward? Yeah, you just took your screw over too. Got a little curl there. Okay. Get in there. Source has been dying light. 
I'm gonna snug it down here. Okay. And you know what? I'm going to cut more of this sheathing down and get that thing wore on. Okay, nice and neat. So the top's actually hanging upside down. There's these two little slots here that correspond with the bracket up here, right? So it's gonna flip up and hang on that. And then the screw will go up in the bottom here to fold it on. So let's see if we can get it up here without it'll fall apart now. So see what happens if it gives a code or something. Well, first of all, plug it in and I'll turn it on. Plug it in, turn it on. Hmm. No readout. Great. Oh, there it goes. Power's on, 100 degrees, priority. It's blown away here, which doesn't need to, because there's nothing on. And, uh, power off. There. Now that works. Mm hmm So, this is basically it. Except for I still need to do a few more, uh, things for the wire here. Down this side, and um, oh yeah, turn the water on. So turn the water on, turn the gas on, right? Because the gas is off still. And uh, remember to turn the valve back on if you have a shop valve for your water thing. And all that's going to be done later because basically they don't want uh, the water turned on in the place right now. There's other things going on, so. No water to, to totally test it out, and um, I'll be back another day to fill up the uh, take care of the hole up there. All right, another day, more tools. Not a different video. I think I already have videos about how to patch up holes. And uh, that is it. If you have any, if you have any questions out there, comments, uh, let me know in the comments down below. And uh, thanks for watching. Time to clean up, I'm out of here.